All right, so um, this, this happens to be a model that has an overlay of a drawing um, right on top of it. And unfortunately, it's more technical than I would really like to show. Um, but I think you can get the idea here of where we're headed, okay? So part of this class is to figure out how to mix some sort of multimedia, I guess you could say, maybe not multimedia, um, but mix a few different types of representation so that you can get the next level of information into your drawing. Um, so this is a, a case where if you could imagine that the model behind is actually a rendering, you know, right, because it's all, you know, white and simple. Um, and then we have line work in the front. So I already taught you one of the most fundamental things about this is that you need to save your camera view, right? Saving your camera view is essential for getting exactly the right um, perspective angle for the model that we render and the line work that we basically draw and place on top. Um, Rhino makes that really easy for us. Um, so, you know, whatever the case here, I'm going to uh, just save one real, he uh, real quick here under perspective. Um, so I will do... Uh, set view, named views, and I'm going to call this one section A, I guess. So now anytime I need to export a section, right, I can, I can keep some background information if the background doesn't change and the section cut does or something else, you know, I can, I can take that and, and run with it. Um, the other thing that we're going to have to do now to this section in order to get the information where we need it to go is we need to have our background, which is going to be a raster image, otherwise known as a render. Simple enough, right? And we're going to need the line work itself. So there are many different ways of doing this. You could have um, just one layer of line work, which is just the cut. Um, that would be this black line right here. Or you could take um, the, the visible lines that happen behind the cut as well. And those are your object lines. Um, and then also hidden lines. But, you know, and I'll show you a, a bit of how you do all of that. Um, but let's start with a very simple, very, very simple one. Um, and we're going to work with just, I guess, I guess we should probably start with the, the basic render. Okay. Um, I think also for this particular exercise, I'm not going to jump into Maxwell. I'm just going to use uh, Rhino Render for now because it's just going to be like the, a placeholder that I'm showing you the method. And then we'll get into all the Maxwell stuff on a real render. So um, my renderer is Rhino Render right now. And I just want to make sure that it's a decent enough um, resolution. Yes. I am, thank you. So 800 by 600 should be fine. And let me do just a quick render. It shouldn't take very long. I don't know if there are any lights. Yeah, okay, so that's fine. Um, so be aware here, and this is my first warning to you about this method, okay? Rhino is a surface modeler. We created something that looks like a solid, but it's not solid. You must understand that. If you're cutting a section, um, you either have to physically cut it and then cap it with a surface, or you have to go through a process of inserting a secondary surface, which I don't suggest you do, and I'm not going to teach you how to do it, um, or you use other graphic methods to fill it in. And that's part of what I'm showing you here. Because we're going to take that line work, we're going to put it over top of our render, and we're just going to draw it in with a color. And it's going to look something similar to this. Um, although it's really, really small. So you can do a color fill over top of the section, and that's going to help read that surface without actually having to go through and model the full surface. Does that make sense? Conceptually? Okay. Well, no, I think this is a sketch. 
This is this looks like SketchUp, to be honest. It could be anything though. It looks like they just rendered it with sketchy lines. Um, all right, so back to this. Uh, we have the image that we want, and so I'm going to save that image, and I'll just place it somewhere because it's going to be a dump file. So I'll just call it dump one. I have a dump folder on all, like all of my workstations, and it's just stuff that when you want to save something and it's not a permanent file that you just delete every once in a while, I suggest having one. It's nice to have. Then you don't junk up your actual folders. Um, all right, so I'm also going to have to pull in Illustrator for this. Okay, so I don't think I introduced Illustrator to you all yet, have I? Nope. How many of you know Illustrator already? Or at least have used it? Okay, well, the good thing is Illustrator is not that intense to do very, very simple line work drawings like this. So let's get that booted up. Um, give me a second to let it initialize, and then I'll continue. All right, back in Illustrator now. Um, Illustrator, uh, well, you've all probably seen Photoshop at least, right? For those of you who are not as software savvy. Um, Photoshop and Illustrator are basically the collaborators, they're, they're kind of synonymous with Rhino and your renderer, right? In the sense that Rhino is creating vector graphics and your renderer is creating raster graphics, meaning it's made out of pixels. So Photoshop will um, create and edit images that are raster with pixels, but Illustrator is a vector graphic software. However, it's two dimensional, it's not 3D. So that's very important to know. Um, we're not gonna get into like all the reasons why right now, just know that if you can, in many cases, the best rule of thumb is if you can use a vector graphic software before processing it into a raster graphic software, it's generally a best, a best workflow. So just go to file open if, you're, if you happen to be following along with me, um, but if not, this is very conceptual and that's okay. Um, I called this, What did I call it? Dump one. Where did I put it? That's the real question. Ah, there it is. All right. <clears throat> so Illustrator has a few things about it. Like it, it, it essentially has a canvas, and the canvas is going to define, you know, how how big the sheet is essentially. So when you go to document setup and you go to edit artboards, you can change the size of the image itself. Um, I happen to have an image that was 800 wide by I think 600 tall. So I'm actually just gonna change my canvas to be that. 800 by 600. And then when you click on any other tool, it's just gonna go back. And so now your image is the same size as your canvas. That's all well and good. The, um, yeah, so uh, I think I want to split this video at this point and move into the actual vector side of it, which is, you know, let's get the line work, let's insert the line work, and then let's make it look like what we want it to look like. Okay, are there any questions on that so far, right? We just basically created a, a draft render using Rhino Render and we placed it in Illustrator. No questions? All right, 